I was around 14 years old, and I'm in my 30s now. This happened a long time ago, but it's still fresh in my memory. You see, my grandparents had this old house made of strong gray rocks that they built way back after my granddad came back from a big war. They built it because they wanted to live the good life, the kind they dreamed about. As years went by, they kept making the house bigger. They added more rooms and stuff, which made the house look a bit strange inside. They had two main bedrooms. One was called the Blue Room, because it had blue walls and stuff, and there was a smaller one that we called the Pink Room, since it had pink decorations. Opposite these rooms was a big living area with an old piano that looked kind of spooky. There were these soft curtains on a huge window, and in the middle of it, there was colorful glass that made the sunlight look pink and green. There was also this really tall clock that made loud sounds every hour. If you walked past this room, you'd get to the kitchen, and near it was the old main door. When my dad was a kid, they made another big room for him to hang out with his pals. Then, later on, they turned their outside place for cars into another bedroom and connected it to the house. This new bedroom was far from the other rooms, and it was all white, with an old bed that had brown and white colors, light curtains, and a carpet that was turning yellowish white. Inside this room were two big closets with a connecting hallway. Both closets had big folding doors. My brother and I used to spend a lot of time at our grandparents' place since our mom was always busy. Even though we liked it there, the house had some weird stuff happening. Like, when we'd be watching TV late at night, we'd hear strange sounds or feel like someone was looking at us. The house made strange sounds, like scratching and footsteps, but we got used to it and didn't think much of it. One Friday night, I was in the white room playing video games. Suddenly, I felt super cold, like I could almost see the air coming out of my mouth when I breathed. Which was weird because it was a hot night, and this room didn't have any cool air coming in since it used to be an outside space. I stopped playing and was warming up my hands when I heard a loud noise from one of the closets. I looked and saw the closet door swing open really fast, showing the darkness inside. I was so scared but thought maybe it was my big brother trying to play a trick on me. Maybe he hid there when I wasn't looking. Hey! I shouted. Come out! This isn't funny! But nobody answered. The room was super quiet and I felt really cold. Goosebumps appeared all over my skin. I grabbed a boot that I had put next to my bed and threw it super hard at the door. The boot hit the door and fell to the floor making a loud sound, but nothing else happened. I stared hard at the door, feeling confused and scared about what might come next. Suddenly, one of the folding doors of the closet started shaking. It closed, then opened again a little bit. I was really scared by now, and I was sure nobody was inside. So I ran out of the room super fast. My brother was just sitting in the big TV room, watching a show like nothing was wrong. I shouted at him to come with me, and tried to tell him about the crazy stuff in the white room. He didn't believe me and ran into the room to see for himself. He made fun of me, saying I was scared of nothing. But then, we both heard another noise. He opened the closet door super wide, ready to see if someone was in there messing with us. It was totally empty. He tried to turn on the closet light to see better. The light was old-fashioned, like the ones you see in old houses or basements. It was just a bulb with a little string you pull to turn it on. He pulled the string and the light turned on. But then, it started to get really bright, and the room got even colder. Suddenly, with a loud sound, the light bulb broke. It was like it got too much power or something. We were both super scared now. We ran into the kitchen and closed the old front door behind us. We looked at each other, trying to figure out what just happened. My brother was about to say something, maybe make fun of me again or say it was nothing. But then, the tall clock in the living area made a sound. It chimed three times, but it was 11.37 p.m., not on the hour when it should chime. We were both super confused and scared. The room felt like it was shaking a lot, and then everything went super quiet. It was so weird. Just when we thought things couldn't get scarier, we heard loud knocks from the door. We quickly pushed stuff against the door to block it. We were too scared to sleep, so we just sat there waiting for morning. When our grandparents woke up, we told them about all the strange things. We asked if they ever had anything like that happen in their house. 
they looked at each other and then said that they didn't believe in ghosts. They said that they built the house and no one ever died there before. When we told our mom later, she had something different to say. She didn't laugh at us or say we were just imagining things. She told us that the room we were in used to be where our great-grandpa lived when he got too old to be on his own. She said he had to leave his own home and wasn't happy about it. He loved to go outside, fish, and be on his own. He got sick and died in that room. Years later, I went back to the house before it was sold. I went into that white room, and everything looked the same. I remembered that scary night and wanted to write it down before I forgot. While I was there, I heard a noise from the closet. It was daytime, so I wasn't too scared. I opened the closet and didn't see any ghosts, but I did find a painting on a shelf. I took it with me and learned that it was painted by my great-grandpa. It was a picture of a river with a man fishing. Everyone was surprised because they thought all of his stuff was gone a long time ago. I like to think that finding this painting was my great-grandpa's way of saying sorry for scaring us that night. I don't really know if that's true, but it's a nice thought. When I was little, around seven years old, I lived in a big old house with my family. This house isn't there anymore, and neither is the railway line close to it. Let's get to what happened. We lived in this big old house that had seen better days. It was right next to some train tracks. When I say close, I mean really close. If you walked from our house for maybe a minute or two, you'd be right at the tracks. Every time a train passed by, our whole house would shake. It was like living in a shaky toy. Later on, the house was split into different homes inside, like an apartment building. This is important for you to know. Living there wasn't nice at all. It was actually pretty tough. Another thing, my brothers, sisters, and I, we didn't have a good time growing up. We faced a lot of tough stuff. I first saw this ghost train when the flowers started blooming and the days got warmer. My room was what used to be a kitchen on the top floor. My dad had sealed the kitchen door, putting boards on it because he was scared I might fall out. There weren't any steps there anymore. I remember one day after Anna, the lady who was supposed to take care of us, was really mean to me. I was scared and hiding under my bed. I don't know how much time passed, but I heard a train whistle. But this whistle was odd. It went three times in a row. I decided to sneak a peek from the door. I remember it was very dark outside and I was worried that if Anna heard me, she'd be mean again. I crouched by the door and heard the whistle a second time. Slowly, I looked out and couldn't believe what I saw. There was a train, but I could see right through it. I was scared, but couldn't look away. It was like a movie scene. Then, I saw a see-through man wearing a black and white striped hat. He was looking out from the train's window. I was super scared, but something changed. When he smiled at me, I felt peaceful, like someone gave me a warm hug. All the bad feelings went away. The kind ghost man waved at me, blew the whistle, and then, poof, he and the train disappeared. I was so shocked. I quickly crawled back to my bed, took my cozy blanket and pillow, and hid under the bed again. That was my little hideaway spot. Throughout that warm season, I saw the ghost train a lot. One time, my big sister Lucy and I even saw it together when the sun was going down. It was a moment I'll never forget. So there's me and my friend Jenny. We were just hanging out, playing in the yard right in front of the house. Suddenly we saw my dad's work car roll in over the tracks and stop in our driveway. The strange part? No one was driving it. Jenny quickly went to the car and touched it. She jumped back because it was really hot. This was weird because there was no one inside. Panicking, she ran to the window of my parents' bedroom and shouted to my mom that dad's car was just sitting in the driveway, but it was hot like someone drove it. But my mom didn't believe her. She said dad had been inside the house all day. The car shouldn't be warm or outside. I tried to calm Jenny down. I touched her arm and guided her away from the window. To distract her, we went to another part of the yard where we had raspberry bushes. We started picking raspberries. As we were doing that, we suddenly heard a train whistle. We both got scared and looked around. And there he was, 
Mr. Train Driver with his big train. Even though he didn't say anything, he was smiling and waving at us. He felt safe, like a kind grandpa. Given all the bad stuff Jenny and I had faced, we felt like Mr. Train Driver was a good change. Throughout the cold months in 1977 and 1978, Jenny and I would sometimes see Mr. Train Driver in his train. And the weird thing? We noticed he'd show up especially on the days when Anna, our nanny, was meaner than usual. One night stands out the most. Next to my bedroom was Jenny's room. We had to go through my room to get there. Anna did something terrible that night. She tried to hurt me in the bathroom, which was upstairs. I don't remember everything clearly, but somehow, Jenny, who was about 10 or 11 years old then, came to my rescue. I can still picture her bravely hitting Anna with a frying pan. After that, she pulled me out, dried me off, and got me into some comfy clothes. We sat together, not talking much, just playing a simple game on the floor, hoping for some peace. I wished my dad would come home and catch Anna doing something wrong so he could take her away. He was a police officer, and my mom worked security, so both of them often worked during the night. That's why we needed a nanny, even though she wasn't nice. We were waiting for what felt like a long time. Both our parents worked late, usually leaving around 11 p.m. Okay, so here's the thing. One night, it must have been around 2 a.m., Jenny and I were just chilling in the room when a bright light appeared. Soon after, we heard the same whistle sound. We got up, curious, to see what was going on outside through the door window. Trust me, what happened next was super weird. You remember that the steps outside were gone and the door was nailed shut, right? As we watched, we saw the nails from the door slowly come out one by one and drop to the ground. We didn't know what to do and just watched in surprise. After the last nail, the door opened by itself. And guess who walked in? Mr. Train Driver. But this time he looked real, not ghost-like. He had a big, friendly smile on his face. It felt like we were seeing a kind grandpa. He stretched out his arms, inviting us. Jenny held my hand tight. Without thinking, we started walking towards him, almost about to take his hand. But then, I felt someone grab me from behind. I turned and saw Jenny being grabbed too. We were both shocked to see it was my dad. But wait, wasn't dad at work? I remember my dad talking firmly to Mr. Train Driver, telling him that he can't take us away. My dad seemed to say something like, please leave us alone. He even started singing something as he led us away. We ended up in a different room downstairs. Not long after, our parents added an extra door and locked it up. That was the last time we ever saw Mr. Train Driver and his train. By the way, we are of Native American heritage, but this whole story didn't happen on a reservation. Now, about our mean nanny Anna, she never got into trouble for how she treated us. Jenny and I were super scared of her. Every time we tried telling Dad about her, she would always find a way to sneakily watch us, and if we said anything bad about her, she would be meaner to us the next day. Oh, and I also have brothers, but I didn't mention them earlier because they never saw the train or Mr. Train Driver. I've had many other strange things happen to me, which I might share someday. Because of all the stuff I went through, I've had a hard time. I wish for happiness and healing for everyone, especially for those who've been hurt. When I was around 15 years old, I stayed in a part of the town with many connected houses. So there wasn't much space for me to have my own room. Because of this, a big storage space or closet was changed into my bedroom. This closet room was on the ground floor, which was the darkest part of our whole house. There wasn't much sunlight coming in. The only windows there were the type you'd see in basements, and they weren't very big. Also, there weren't any bright lamps or lights except the ones in my room. So, during the night, the downstairs area was super dark. I'm telling you this so you can understand how scared I felt in my story. Back then, I was looking after my sister's pet cat named Fluffy. That night, like most other nights, Fluffy was sleeping next to me on my bed. He always liked to sleep near me, so I always knew he was on my bed when I felt his weight against my blanket. That particular night, I stayed up late playing a handheld video game. 
I wasn't supposed to do that, so I had headphones in. I was really into the game and not paying much attention to anything else. Fluffy was next to me, just like always, and I was having fun playing my game. I was so caught up in the game that I barely felt Fluffy next to me. I had the game volume down a bit so I could still hear if my dad got up. If I heard him, I'd quickly hide my game under my pillow. But then, while I was in the middle of a game level, I heard a scratching noise from the outside of my door. I quickly jumped out of my bed thinking maybe I had accidentally shut Fluffy outside of my room. But when I opened the door, there was nothing there. Turning around I saw Fluffy resting peacefully on my bed. I was really puzzled. If Fluffy's here then what made that noise? I glanced upstairs towards my dad's room, which was right at the beginning of the staircase. His door was shut, so I knew he was still asleep. When this happened, I was the only one at home. My sister had moved out a bit before this, so it was just me and Fluffy, the cat I was taking care of. Honestly the scratching noise spooked me a little, but I tried to brush it off, close the door, and go back to playing my game. I kept patting Fluffy as I played. However, I couldn't stop thinking about the noise. It was strange to hear that scratching sound. My dad was sound asleep, and he's not the type to play pranks. If he wanted to tell me something, he would have just come and opened my door. To feel safer, I removed one headphone so I could listen better. While patting Fluffy, he suddenly went stiff. The scratching sound came back, but this time it was louder and lasted longer, about half a minute. I kept thinking, why is this happening? It doesn't make any sense. And then, another noise startled me. I heard something fall off the TV shelf in the living room, just outside my room. The sound told me it was the metal bowl with decorative pine cones. It's a heavy bowl, not easy to tip over. Now it wasn't just the weird scratching, something had knocked over the bowl. Gathering some bravery, I grabbed a small knife I kept by my bed. I knew it wasn't much, but it made me feel a bit safer. I opened my bedroom door, and as before, there was no one. The ground floor was really creepy at night. The moonlight was weak, but I could see the bowl's outline on the floor. I picked it up, placed it back on the TV shelf, and quickly went back to my room, closing the door softly behind me. I couldn't sleep at all that night. Now, I'm 20 years old, and I think about that night a lot. Even after all these years, I can't come up with a logical reason for everything that happened. I'm not really into ghost stories, but this one event has always stayed with me. Of all the strange things I've experienced, this one remains the most puzzling.